What happens when you give gamers an incredible new toy to play around with, a service that no other game dev in the world has ever given to its players, offering a kind of value to consumers that only a handful of other games have ever given to their players? How long do you think it takes for someone to try and ruin it for everyone? One minute? Two minutes? Five seconds? Yeah, it was about five seconds. This is the dark side of the Steam market. Now, this video is sponsored by Skinport, the easy to use skins marketplace where you can sell your skins for real cash. Skinport has a huge range of skins, over 220,000 of them at prices miles cheaper than the Steam market, up to 35% off. You can purchase skins in an instant, just pick what you want and straight up buy it. There is no need to deposit and there are no hidden fees. There's also a high definition screenshot feature built into the site itself so you can see exactly what you're getting before you buy. The site is also super highly rated on Trustpilot with a 4.9 out of five star rating. It's completely safe and reliable to use, so I highly recommend checking it out. Link is in the description. So the thing that's always really breathed life into the Steam market isn't what you can do on Steam, but what you can do off it. Converting your Steam balance and Steam items into cash. Valve has always tolerated and even tacitly encouraged this behavior by their players because it's good for their business, and it's led to a large ecosystem developing. Oh, and it's also led to scammers. Lots of scammers. Lots and lots of scammers. One of the biggest problems is actually credit card scammers, but Valve knows about these guys and they've implemented a bunch of features to make things really difficult for them and a massive pain for everyone else too. But fundamentally, they are necessary for the Steam market to exist. But what if the enemy is on the inside? What if the problem was the players themselves? Well, that brings us to our first topic. Bitcoin. So one of the cool things about the Steam market is that the indie devs are completely free to create their own items for their own games, which are able to be sold on the platform. They even get a cut of the fee in the process. It's a really great grassroots system that empowers the devs and gives them opportunities no other games platform on the internet would offer them. <laughs> Gee, wouldn't it be a pity if a greedy scumbag tried to ruin it for everyone? Well. Let's talk about a game called Run. Run, as you can clearly see, was a triple A masterpiece. The more you played it, the more and more excited you got to keep on going. And Run definitely did cause some excitement on Steam, just probably not in the way the developer intended. So Run was published by Sean. Who is Sean? This is Sean. Sean wasn't the dev though, that was someone else. And Sean also had some friends. I, I know often people on the internet don't actually have friends, but Sean did. And Sean decided to tap into the whole Steam market thing by adding some items to his game. Now, initially these items were completely unremarkable. Apparently one was called General Snooze, whatever that is, and he gave a stack of it to all of his friends and devs, thousands of items each. And then things got a bit crazy. You see, on the 3rd of August 2020, the general snooze item was changed to something slightly more attractive looking, Bitcoin. And almost immediately after it happened, it was pumped to the top of the scene market, appearing on the front page for the entire world to see. At which point, a rush of confused buyers started buying them up as a curiosity. Sean's friends, realizing the opportunity, immediately started frogging them off. By the thousand, but despite the mad stonks they were suddenly making, there was also a small problem. You see, the people buying these things quickly realized they weren't quite getting what they expected. In particular, the Bitcoin item came with a seven day market hold. And what does this mean? Well, it means if you bought it, you can't resell it for seven days. Or to put it in other words, it means you've just been scammed. And the buyers weren't particularly happy about this. They quickly started leaving lovely messages like, I hope you go to jail on the Steam profiles of the people selling. Threads went up warning people of what was going on, but most importantly, Valve discovered what was happening and they were pissed. Run was deleted, the items were deleted, every sale was refunded and everyone who was selling the Bitcoin item got banned. One of the people caught up in the event was the developer who appealed to Steam support to unban him, only to receive this lovely message. We've looked into this, and the more we look, the more bad actions you've been seen to take part in. Aside from participating in the recent Bitcoin scam, you've also done a few other bad things. Multiple accounts, some used to create spam community groups. Model accounts used to bot item trading and selling, which is against our SSA. Fake user reviews, tied to you and your Steamworks group in your game. So with all that said, no. 
we will not lift any restrictions on your account. Instead, we've also banned your Steamworks access and all your games from Steam. We do not want to have an ongoing business relationship with you. Thanks. Yeah, the f pissed. But the people involved claimed they were responsible. Not for the pump anyway. They flogged off the Bitcoin when it got going, but they claimed they didn't initiate it. And pretty much no one believed them because, dude, are you kidding? The item mysteriously changes to Bitcoin, it suddenly gets pumped, and you guys just happen to be there to make a profit. What a crazy string of coincidences. And I also heard a number of contradictory stories from the people involved, which didn't exactly make me feel much confidence in the we didn't do nothing narrative. But having said all of that, they might still be telling the truth. You see, I actually spoke to the dev when I was making this video, hoping to get his side of the story. And he said to me, there is a video on YouTube which shows that someone else pumped the item. And by the way, the pump was also due to a glitch. It wasn't really a proper pump. Now, I didn't believe him at first because that story sounded super convenient. Also, he didn't know where the video was also super convenient. So I explained my concerns in a much more respectful manner than that. So he went off to find the video. I had zero expectations he would return with it, but lo and behold, an hour later, I was picking my jaw up off the floor when he sent me the video and it actually backed up what he was claiming. Hello guys. So I just uh, watched a video from Jesus about the Bitcoin disaster that happened yesterday. I just got some additional information and tell you how it came so far because I'm actually the guy who started it all. Yeah, and this Herbie guy is not kidding. He started it, but the funny thing was he didn't actually intend to. So I was just browsing for this item. It's a Bitcoin item from Diet of Fear. Many big traders showcase it here if they buy or sell CSGO or Dota items for Bitcoin. When I searched for it, I found these other items as well and I thought yeah why not buy one 337 Bitcoin if they are just three cents and so I made the offer to buy one 337 and there were actually only this many listed for that price. And this is really significant because if we take the total number of Bitcoin sold here and then average the price between the two sales it perfectly matches what's shown on the Steam market. The dev is right, this is a bug. It looks like tens of thousands of dollars were spent on the item when it was actually only about 60. And it was pretty soon after this that Hervey, the guy who bought the Bitcoin, realized something wasn't quite right. And after two hours, when I checked the market again, the Bitcoin item was at the bottom here. One hour later, it went up again on the second place. And in the evening, it was the first or the most popular item. Yeah, that, that was it. The scam was on. Bitcoin got onto the market and people just started buying it like crazy. Except there doesn't really seem to have been a scam here. The item was boosted because Hervey bought some as a joke and the market glitched when it recorded the sales, not because of some nefarious scheme. And that was all it took for Steam users to go insane buying up this thing. A weird item pops up on the front page of the market and people literally started scamming themselves. That's apparently the mindset of people on Steam. Some random item they don't recognize shows up and they immediately start buying it like crazy. Apparently, the free market is literally too much to handle. Now, in fairness, this only worked because Sean's friends realized what was happening and started selling everything off. So maybe you think they're culpable in that respect, up to you, but I think they're probably unfairly banned. But what if the developer actually was malicious? What sort of terrible things could they get up to? Well, that brings us to our next story, Bomberman. Now, a while back I used to have an official Discord server. I didn't want the Discord server, I was pestered into accepting it, and all it really did was cause me regular trouble. So much so that I had to delete it. And this is a story about one of the times it was causing me trouble. What sort of trouble was it? Oh, you know, just affiliating me with the most disgusting thing in the entire history of the Steam market. You know, that sort of thing. So, what happened here? Well, long story short, there was a game called Bomberman on Steam. It was made by a Chinese developer, it was a laughably bad asset flip, and it had this puzzle game in it for some reason. 
Now, these puzzles were being used to generate these items here, and these items here were being used to do all these dodgy transactions on the Steam market. Now, what were these transactions for? Well, we're not gonna look at that just yet, partly because it's something that's still happening, but also because that's not what Bomberman is famous for. No, Bomberman is famous for something much worse. You see, in January 2021, I came across Bomberman and I kinda thought it was some weird shit, so I made a video about it. I had a laugh at how crappy the game was, speculated about what they might be doing on the Steam market, and it all seemed kind of harmless at the time, which it was, for about a day. But then, someone who watched my video decided to have a dig through Bomberman's game files. It was an objectively badly made game, clearly made by incompetent devs, so maybe, just maybe, there might be some juicy stuff in here. And what he discovered was the holy grail, the developer API key. Leaving this thing in the game files for any person who downloads it to find is an act of monumental stupidity by the devs. Like, this is covering your face with lemon juice because you think it'll make you invisible when you rob a bank, levels of stupidity. And one of the things you can do with this key is add and remove items for the game on the Steam market. Now, in the right hands, this could be an instrument of comic brilliance, a legendary case of games that making a terrible mistake with hilarious consequences, but unfortunately, it didn't end up in the right hands. Instead, it ended up in the possession of a sick degenerate who used it to turn Steam into a literal house of horrors. Now, we're gonna call the guy who found it Steve. That's not his actual name, I didn't record it, that was definitely a mistake in hindsight, but you know, heat of the moment, unfortunately. And after he found it, Steve went straight to my Discord server and began showing off his discovery. Now, at first, all he did was make an item based on my apps. No, literally, that's what this is. And he distributed this item to a bunch of people on the server. Great last were had, they all wanted my apps, apparently. They also made a fake Dragon Law item. Sometimes people make these items to scam people, but these ones were just intended as a joke. And it was around this time I was called into the server. Steve explained to me what happened, I laughed awkwardly, and then my laughter stopped because the items on the market suddenly started changing. And by changing, I mean the items rapidly started shifting through a huge range of gore and pornographic images, or more often, both things at the same time. Whoever was doing it clearly had a massive library of it at their disposal, and the server basically descended into pandemonium. Steve had given a number of key members of the server a huge number of these items back when it was just an innocent joke about my abs, and now that the images were changing to gore, the people holding them started freaking out. Now, Steve insisted he was doing his best to stop what was happening, but apparently he was powerless to halt it. And worst of all, because of all the dodgy stuff the game devs have been doing with the items, they were visible on the front page of the Steam market. Anyone using the Steam market could see them. Outrage threads quickly started popping up across Reddit and Steam wondering what the f was going on here. And in the meantime, the images had reached their disgusting finale an incredibly infamous image of a woman who'd been murdered, which had been widely shared online by a killer in 2019. Again, still fully visible on the front page of the Steam market. In the server, the community was rapidly trying to dispose of all the items into trash bots. I was kind of in a blind panic. Calling it unsanitary at this point was kind of the understatement of the century. And I began trying to catalog everything that was going on in case the media got involved. Everything minus the actual images anyway. And given Steve adamantly assured us he was somehow powerless to stop it, all we could do was wait for Valve to get involved. They took 12 hours. Miraculously, this whole episode somehow escaped wider attention. This is the only real media article that got published. I blurred out one part of the headline because I don't want to show it on YouTube, and to the best of my knowledge, that detail's incorrect anyway. And with the items gone, the whole disgusting incident kind of faded into obscurity, although it still leaves an unanswered question. Who was actually behind this? For a brief period of time, the exploit had been posted onto the PC Gaming Reddit by someone in my server. They quickly removed it afterwards because it was obviously a terrible idea, but it certainly created an opportunity for some sick weirdo to find it and start causing havoc. But there is another explanation, which is that it was Steve all along. Now, I don't really have any solid evidence here, but I always thought it was weird he was apparently powerless to do anything to stop the item. Sure, he might not have been able to stop it completely, but he should at least have been able to temporarily change them to something not disgusting, but I never saw him do it. 
not once. And also, the fact that the shit show only really began after I got to the server is kind of sus in its own right. It's like someone's waiting for me to be around to witness the carnage unfold. It could just be a coincidence, though that one is, is a bit weak. But either way, the Bomberman saga does highlight a big vulnerability of the scene market. All it takes is one dodgy dev to do something stupid and suddenly it becomes a weapon of destruction for some sick freak living in their parents' basement. And unfortunately, there's quite a lot of those people online. Now, despite the whole Bomberman debacle, weird Chinese games doing weird things on the Steam market have not gone away. In fact, they have actually grown. There is now an entire industry of dodgy knockoff games that exist solely to create items that the devs can use to do weird things on the Steam market. The two most notorious at the moment are the games City of Brave and another knockoff by the same developer called Lord of the Sea. Now, I was going to record some footage from City of Brave for this video, but apparently it has this small problem where it destroys the computers of people who play it, so I decided to give that one a miss. But I did play Lord of the Sea, and basically the game is the laziest Unity asset flip knockoff you could ever imagine. The main character is this generic fantasy hero in a medieval suit of armor with a sword, seems a bit inappropriate for the high seas, and the game's instructions forget to tell you how to fight people when you're sailing your ship, which kind of makes it a bit hard to play. So if it's not for the gameplay, what is it for? Well, the answer are these weird items that come attached to the game. Both games have a stack of them and they're being used to shift colossal amounts of Steam wallet funds between Steam accounts on a daily basis. And while it's not possible to get exact values, we are talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars here. This is a massive operation and it's definitely being run by the devs. You see, there's a very good reason to make your own game and your own set of items to do this. If you buy one of these items on the Steam market, you'll see there is a 15% surcharge on the sale. 5% of that goes to Valve, but the rest goes to the devs. So it makes sense to own the game in question because when the item is sold, you're gonna be collecting that 10% yourself. Otherwise, you're going to lose it during the sale. But the more important question is, what are these guys actually doing this for? Because they are moving around a ton of Steam Wallet funds. This is big business. And one of the challenges is just identifying who is behind all this. I bought a bunch of the items from these games to see who was listing them, and it mostly seemed to be a network of bot accounts. Apparently you can get items from these games just by idling them, so maybe these accounts got the items this way, or maybe not. Either way though, they're probably not the devs. In fact, figuring out who the devs are was one of the real problems I had. How do you identify these guys? Well, luckily, one of them seems to have identified himself. So on the store page for City of Brave, you'll find a big detailed review by a guy called Barker Patrick the Cute. Now, if we click on it, you'll see there is a discussion chain further down. And basically, you know, Patrick has this wall of text where he says he thinks the game is probably involved in money laundering or something dodgy. And down here, a guy called Porker shows up to defend the honor of this game. He claims to be a friend of the dev and claims the dev, you know, recognizes it's not very good and he's working to make it better. O obvious nonsense. The game is broken. It's been out for six months. There's been nothing done to it in the meantime. And he also denies it's part of an illegal scheme and says it's, you know, it's just false accusations. There is nothing dodgy going on here. Both of these things are obvious provable lies. It's ridiculous. But just adding to the mystery, Porker is a Brazilian account. He's got you know, Portuguese all over his account. He's got Brazilian friends. But the game has obviously been made by Chinese dev. And it really raises a lot of questions about what the hell is actually going on. One possibility is that it's being used to sell Steam wallet balance within China. Another is that it's being used to move Steam wallet funds out of hacked accounts. And another is that it's being used to just outright transfer money out of China via the Steam market. And while it is impossible to know which one it is, and it could be something else entirely, the fact that Porker is so aggressive in defending it basically tells you that it's nothing good. If he didn't think there would be serious consequences to telling the truth, he'd tell us what they're doing. One day, that truth is going to come out. And it's worth keeping in mind, this is a Chinese game. These are Chinese games. And China is currently run by a dude who really doesn't like video games. So it might be a bit awkward if there's some massive illegal money laundering scheme discovered on the Steam market. I really hope that's not what these guys are doing. As I said at the start, it'd be a real shame if someone ruined it for everyone. And with that, I'm pretty much done with this video. If you enjoyed it, please like, comment, and subscribe. Massively appreciated. Otherwise, trust the numbers, not your guts. I'm Jesus. 
Thanks for watching. See ya.